This use update is brought to you by They ask us how we do it. How we outrun the world. They ask us how does it feel to fly? How do we dive head first into the deep? And emerge victorious. They ask us if we're afraid, if we're nervous, or if we ever feel lonely so far away from home. But the truth is, home is always right here with us. Get ready to witness the magic of the Olympic Games like never before. This is your Barbados Today afternoon update for Tuesday, August the 23rd. Thanks for joining us. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. In our top story, the National Union of Public Workers is demanding a better deal for some employees at the Barbados Vocational Training Board. The union says it cannot be business as usual for demonstrators, and now was the time for an urgent upgrade. According to the union, for more than a decade now, the teaching staff at the board has been pressing for their status to be regularized in accordance with the demands and requirements of the job. It insists the employees have been at a disadvantage for years, and the upgrade should not be further delayed by a planned overall restructuring of the training board. To the law courts now, murder accused Dwayne Trace was remanded to Her Majesty's prison at Dawes this morning. 34-year-old Chase, or Laurie Lorder of Valerie Brittensill St. Michael, is accused of taking the life of Kadeen Joseph of 2nd Avenue Grisettes St. Michael on June the 10th. Chase, who did not have an attorney at law when he appeared before the acting chief magistrate Douglas Frederick at the District A Magistrates Court, was not required to plead today. He was remanded until September the 20th. Local tourism officials are upbeat after recent high-level talks in Britain with key interests, including tour operators, travel agents and media representatives. The talks, which were led by Tourism Minister Richard Seeley, was an attempt to ensure that Barbados retains its leading position in the British market in the wake of Britain's decision to exit the European Union. Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., William Griffith, is confident that the island will hold its own. Back from both for trade and media partners was encouraging. What we're hearing is that despite the current economic uncertainty in the UK, there's still a huge interest amongst travelers and a real desire to travel to Barbados. It is also very important for us to ensure that we maintain the momentum that we achieved last year and that we record growth in this very important 50th anniversary year. Our work in developing new products, services and events was well received and our meetings this summer has laid the groundwork for even more productive meetings between Barbados and UK companies when we return to world travel market this November. We are still anticipating a very challenging period ahead, but we are going to be very, very prepared for it. In other news now, Barbados Labour Party candidate for St. Michael West, Joseph Athley, is warning government to fairly allocate stores in the proposed duty-free zones announced last week. He is also urging authorities to ensure local stores do not lose business to these zones. Addressing a branch meeting over the weekend, Athley claimed there was already discrimination about how contracts are allocated in the construction sector and said this must not be repeated in the granting of licenses in the planned duty-free zones. Now, I don't want to see what happened in construction happen with reference to the duty-free areas where only certain people with certain names or certain people with certain amounts of capital are given the opportunity to set up or invest in one of the duty free areas. You know it happens. I know it happens. How easy is it to get one of the duty free shops at the airport? How easy is it to get one of the duty free shops in the Bristol Port? How easy? You know the difficulty. And the point I'm making is that we do not want to see with respect to the establishment of duty areas in Barbados, as outlined by the minister, a situation where only some people are allowed to benefit. Now I made that point. 
I also heard Ms. Motley make that point. I made a secondary point, or a second point, and that is, that you've got to be careful that when you set up a duty-free area here, or areas here in Barbados, that people do not resort to shopping there, meaning that there's a loss of business for people who are operating traditionally outside of the duty-free areas. More help for students in need as the start of the new school term draws near. The Salvation Army today donated school uniforms to a number of families who were unable to meet the costs. Divisional Commander Major Senior Theodore says the donations were possible with the help of the public and the public partners. They have been very faithful. The Army has been there for over a hundred years. And we have been able to serve the needy in our society just because of the generosity, the kind assistance of the Barbados community. So the Salvation Army, we are very indeed um, appreciative of the help of the Barbados people. There's regional and international news after this short break. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225, 220. Who? For where? That is the best still news. I don't read about that from Barbados today since last night. That can only the car do. 220, who? Barbados Today. News you can trust. Now, forecasters are keeping a close eye on a tropical wave located about 750 miles east of the Lesser Antilles. The Miami-based Hurricane Center has already advised interests in the Eastern Caribbean to monitor the progress of the system, even as the Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter is preparing to investigate the system later today. Forecasters say the system has a 50% chance of developing into a tropical storm during the next five days. On the world scene, Russia will not compete at next month's Paralympics in Rio after losing an appeal against a ban imposed for state-sponsored doping. The Court of Arbitration for Sports, CAS, upheld the International Paralympics Committee's IPC ban on all Russian competitors. The IPC made the decision after McLaren report detailed a Russian state-sponsored doping program. I believe the Russian government has catastrophically failed its para-athletes. Their medals over morals mentality disgusts me. The complete corruption of the anti-doping system is contrary to the rules and strikes at the very heart of the spirit of Paralympic sport. It shows a blatant disregard for the health and well-being of athletes and quite simply has no place in Paralympic sport. Their thirst for glory at all costs has severely damaged the integrity and image of all sports and has certainly resulted in a devastating outcome for the Russian Paralympic Committee and para-athletes. That's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper email at this and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, our screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.